Hi, this is Lauren with Craft Some Joy. For those who are new here to my channel, I want to say welcome. And for you subscribers, a huge thank you. Thank you for being the heart of my YouTube channel. Well, today I am really excited because we are continuing with the Progress on Project series. And this is Pop Episode Four. Yay. So we are going to have a lot of fun today. Today's episode is going to be packed a lot like episode three. And I hope you guys uh, were able to really take in everything that I put into episode three. I know that was a lot of information, but I felt like you kind of needed that overview so that you could you could see the big picture. So one of the things I wanted to do today was break up into some more smaller chunks this whole process. But as I mentioned in episode three, we really did need to talk about all the different pieces to scrapbooking. And I know this is kind of a heady conversation and it's kind of a lot to absorb, but just take it in the pieces that you can because it does really help to think about all of this, to have a plan, to have a strategy. Then you're going to avoid kind of where I am down the road if you're a new scrapbooker or maybe you're with me if you've been doing this a while and you're just kind of started some projects, stopped some projects and just kind of questioning what am I doing and what's the best way to continue because I love the craft and I think a lot of you that I've heard from love the craft. We love to scrapbook. We love working with our pictures, but we also really need to be organized and think about how we're going to continue with our projects. And I do know there's some out there that just want to scrapbook and they just scrapbook whatever feels right to them. That's totally fine too. But for me, I need some organization and I need structure and I need to have thought about my whole entire plan. So that's how this whole process was born, the progress on projects process. So if you remember, I talked about the three different types of scrapbooks that I wanted to make. I wanted to make big moments, chronological scrapbooks. I wanted to make theme scrapbooks. And then I wanted to start a library of memories type of scrapbook. So what I'm going to talk about today are my big moments. And then I'm going to make another episode where I'm going to talk about my theme scrapbooks and another episode where I'm going to talk about library of memories. So that's kind of where we're going. But today, I don't want to give it all to you right now because it's going to be too much. So today, what I want to do is really dig into big moments and give you some good information on how to think about this. And so then you get to do a couple things. You get to decide whether this is a type of scrapbook that you want to have on your bookshelf <laughs> in your home, whether you want to continue chronological scrapbooking, whether the big moments idea uh, is sounds right for you. Uh, and you know, all of these things can be modified to meet your needs and your wants for what you want to do. And then if you do want to do this, then you can follow along the process that I'm going to go through to kind of show you how this is working. And we'll do the same for the theme albums and the library of memories. But as I mentioned, we're going to start with big moments. Okay, so how do we start? Well, if you remember, we have our pop planner. And so in the pop planner, what I want you to first do is take a look at the tab called album tracker. And if you have filled out this tracker, it might look something like this. This is my vacation album tracker where I started putting down all the vacation albums I wanted to do and some of the other album projects. But I also have my family tracker. So this is the one where I needed to start because this is really my chronological scrapbooks. These are my family chronological albums. And so I just kind of wanted to take a minute and, and show you how I'm thinking about my big moment scrapbooking while looking at this tracker. So as I look at this tracker, I can see that I have a lot of albums that are not started or in process. And 
especially in these first years. I don't have a whole lot completed. So these are albums that I know I can go back and look at as big moments. And then I went and I, I did get some albums completed and then I have some that are in process and some that I need to start. And then I did a whole run of albums where, that are completed. And then if you get down here, I have 2008 and 2009, which are not started. And so for me, for my big moments, I decided this is where I'm going to start. You can start anywhere you have gaps in your timeline. But for me, this was just kind of a logically good place to start right here with 2008 and 2009, since I hadn't gotten any of those photos off my computer and sorted and organized and into albums. Okay, so from my album tracker then, I know 2008, 2009, 2010, I really, I, they're all not started or some are in process. So really, if you look at this album tracker, I need a lot of work from 2008 on, and then I need to go back and look at some of these other gaps in my timeline. Okay. So that's the album tracker overview. Now what I wanna do is flip over to big moments. And for me, I went through the list and kind of thought about what were my big moments for a particular year. And if you remember, we also have a big moment tracker that goes behind this little kind of title page for the big moments. So we have the big moments, scrapbooking kind of gives you some ideas of what big moments could be and then you can write your own and then we have the tracker so these trackers of course not filled out look like this so what I did was I thought okay I need to start at 2008 and I want to print a tracker for each year because as I go through and look at my digital photos, I wanna take notes. So really these are great forms to take your notes on as you're going through digital. Most of us by 2008 or wherever you went digital, um, these forms would be a great way to take notes for your digital photographs. And I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more. Okay, so what I did is I printed 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, and so on. All the way up until 2020, seriously. So I have a whole stack of these trackers that now I know I need to get my photos sorted and printed for all of these years because all of these are gonna go into my big moment scrapbook chronological albums. Okay. I'm gonna come back to this in just a minute. But another thing that I wanted to mention before I kind of go into big moments a little deeper is the project tracker form again. And I have added yet another layer to this form, to the project tracker form. And what I decided is that as I was kind of going through this process, I was realizing that I also being a planner, I wanted to see what albums I needed and what albums I had and what I could use where. And so I decided that this was a great form for color coding because I also love color. And if you remember in the last episode, the, this is going back to the project tracker. This is not the timeline tracker, this is the project tracker. And there are a lot of different ways to use this form. You can use the grid either horizontally, vertically, however you need to use it. But I did go back and look at this form using the project tracker as a chronological tracker. So I put in the years here from 2000 to 2009. And then what I did in these columns is I thought, okay, for the year 2000, what are the books, the albums that I need to finish for that year? What are the, what are the projects that I was working on for that year? And so I went across for the projects. So in 2000, I did a family book. Ellen was in her growing years book and Adam was in his first year book. 
So on this tracker, what I decided to do was go ahead and write everything down that I could according to that year and the projects that I was doing or had already finished. So in 2000, I had a family book. I had one volume and my albums are green for my family books. And that album is completed. And so I have a C with a circle around it. It's a family book and it's one green album. Ellen is in her growing years. Her albums are pink. And so I do have an entire album for the year 2000 for her. And it's already complete. And Adam was in his first year. His books are navy blue. And so navy blue is here and his book is complete. So that's my year 2000. In 2001, again, that's when that explosion happened, if you remember, and I actually ended up making two volumes of family books. Those are both complete, but I put two green dots here so that I just kind of had a visual representation of what my bookshelf looks like. I have two green albums for the year 2001. Ellen still had, she's in her growing years, and she still had a whole volume of pink, and that one's completed. And Adam, his is in the growing years, and that one's in process. So now, as I'm looking at this, I may want to try to squeeze some of uh, these years into Adam's blue album. But as I do this, these are in process, so they're not complete. So as I'm putting that in, I may have to add another blue album, or I may not. It just depends, but I can always add that little dot in if I need to. So going back to the year two, 2002, again, I had two green albums for 2002. Those are in process. All the photos are in, but I need to do my journaling and finishing touches. And then Ellen switched from her growing up yearbook. This was her first year of kindergarten. And if you remember the trackers that I talked about, in my last episode, this is what you can pull out and reference back as to what year they were in what grade. Okay, so depending on where they were, you can see what birthday and where, where they were in school in different, in, in their keeping track of tracker. So everything that you do is always a great reference that you want to keep it on hand so that you can kind of keep referring back as you're looking at your projects. So then in 2002, I have my two green family albums and then Ellen moved to red for her school books. All my kids have red for their school books. So in Ellen's first school book, she has kindergarten first and second. And then in her next book, this is third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade. Now fifth grade does kind of go into 2008, but I'm just kind of leaving it here in this square. And those are still in process and not started. So I do know that all three of these years, I'm gonna to try to fit into one album. So I have one red circle here. And if you remember what I've mentioned before is that after the school books, once she started middle school, so this is actually sixth grade, is when she, in 2008, she started sixth grade. This is going into her all about book. So this is gonna be all about Ellen, and it's gonna start in 2008, and it's gonna go back to a pink color. And then depending on how many years I can get into that pink book, then on the next project tracker timeline, I will go ahead and put another pink dot when I start her second volume for her All About book. Okay, so that's kind of how I have this visually represented. And so if I wanted to add in Audrey here, I would add in in 2001 is when I have Audrey and she would have her baby book and then she would start her first year. Okay, and Audrey's books are purple and so I would just make a purple circle right there. So that would start her for first purple and then her next one would be Audrey growing And actually, I do have her first year, that one's complete. And then her growing up is in process. 
And so that would be one, I know I, I already know that book is full, so that's one circle. And then this is another book. So you can already see how I'm looking and seeing visually represented by my little color dots all the different albums that I have. So this is really a nice way to plan because what you can see here just by your dots is how many albums you're going to need or how many albums you may already have. So it's just a nice representation of that. Now I also just kind of want to show you how I've done that for travel albums and for some different uh, theme albums. So this was something that kind of actually led me to think about how to visually represent my album somewhere on these trackers is that I needed to figure out where to put what albums. And you know, so I love the Creative Memories albums and sometimes they come out with limited edition albums, but I don't always wanna just jump and buy that limited edition unless I've thought about what I wanna use it for. So this is a great way where I can now visually represent what the different types of albums, these specialty albums, and where they might go. So in other words, for Christmas, I have a gray album with a Christmas bird on it. That's a Christmas album. And this album, I'm not quite sure how many years it'll hold, but I do want to start it in 1997 when Ellen was born. So it was our first family Christmas and then make that go all the way up until present. And so wherever that needs to stop, I'll make another album here and I'll have to decide what kind of a Christmas album I want to continue with. And the same for Betty's Heritage book, if you remember, I did hers in the Gray Memories and Milestones, and that I just noted in the yellow box. So whenever I had a lot of these different types of albums, I decided to just go ahead and use a yellow marker and, and just make a little box so that I know, okay, these two boxes here, I need to figure out what albums I'm going to use for these projects. And the same over here. So Creative Memories came out with a beautiful new album with a pine tree on it. And I thought that would be a beautiful book to use for my Grand Canyon trip. And I already know that I had not started that book, but yet that would be a wonderful fit for that album. So this just helps your planning process and gives you another overview look at what types of albums you may need for your different projects. So I just wanted to go over that really quickly as we're kind of looking once again at these project trackers. Okay, so Definitely print as many of these as you need, and then also consider using them as a visual look at the kinds of albums that you have, and the colors if you color code your albums, and also the different types of project albums that you may want or that you may have. Okay, so you can see that right there. Okay, so let's get back into our big moment scrapbooking. And this is really exciting. So what I ended up doing was getting my trackers printed off as I showed you for all the different years. And then I decided to start with the year 2008. So how I used this tracker is that I went to my computer and I put in my search bar 2008 and show me all the photos. Okay, so I wanted to see all the photos in 2008. And then what I realized I needed to do was put my blinders on because once I see all the photos that we took for a certain year, I start reminiscing and thinking about all these wonderful photos and how sad I am that I haven't printed them and how sad I am that they're not in albums. And then you just have to do a reality check and you have to say, I'm gonna do what I can right now and right now my focus is big moments so in that year 2008 i was going to look for certain events and again this goes back to what events are important to you during the year and what um, what events are a big moment for that year so for 2008 i started looking at my photos and remember I had said that if you have a holiday, say like Valentine's Day, 
I was looking at, say, the year 2011, I didn't get very many good Valentine pictures that year. So that year in 2011 was kind of a dud and I probably wouldn't use a Valentine's Day page in 2011. But when I was looking at 2008, I had some great Valentine's Day pictures. And so as I was scrolling through, and then in January, I realized we were in Big Bear and there were some great snow pictures. Now, again, we are going to just keep these as the highlights, the very, very high level, big moments for the year. So I just picked a few Big Bear photos that would just go on two pages. Now I have enough photos in Big Bear that I could fill up eight two page spreads but I just wanted to get some highlights of just our family for the Big Bear, okay? So then when I selected those, what I did is I grabbed those photos and in my file structure on my computer, I have a Big Moments overall folder and then under that, I have the Family 2008 Big Moments, okay? Now I also, in this process, decided that my keyword for the big moments was going to be BM, and then for this year, it was gonna be underscore 2008. And so I just made a note of that up on the top of the tracker. Now in my software, what can happen is once I have all of these photos into that folder where it's just the big moments for 2008, I can select all of those at once and give them all the keyword BM underscore 2008. So that's how I ended up uh, tagging all of these photos. So not only was I looking at this big moment 2008 on the computer and looking at my digital photos, but I was also looking at where I was going to put those photos. And if you remember, I have a power sort box. This is available from Creative Memories, and this one is called Big Moments Heinz Family. And then in the front of this box is my 2008 tab. And so I started last night, I just started looking at those photos, and if you recall, my favorite way of printing photos is to print at home. And if you're interested in finding out more on how I make these gorgeous, beautiful prints, check out my print at home video because I have everything detailed on how I print at home. And I love it because I go through and I selected my Big Bear photos from January, and then I went ahead and put picked them, I put them in the folder, and I printed them. And so I have these photos ready to go on my pages, my very first pages for the year 2008. So if you can see, these are just beautiful, beautiful quality photos. This is the Ultra Pro Luster Paper from Red River Paper. And you can see we had just such a fun time up in Big Bear that I just needed to put that in my Big Moments album. Okay, so I had my stack of photo folders ready to go for the year 2008. And then I just, as I selected my pictures, I would send them to the printer. And then once I had those photos printed, I would make a check that I printed those photos. Now, if you do use an online service or you still have someone local who can print for you, you can do the same thing. You can send the whole batch to them and then you get to just check off all of the ones that you've already printed. But this was good for me because as I was printing at home, I was checking off the ones I was doing. So then as I went through and I see here, like the next event was Valentine's Day, you can see in my little pod for my power sort box, I have Valentine's as in the next folder, then I have Adam's birthday, and then I have Easter, and Ellen's birthday, Mother's Day, and so on. So I have all of my big moments set up in one little pod for the year. Now, this is exciting because a few things happen when you look at your tracker. You get to see how many pages are actually gonna be in that album. 
Now, I don't know about you, but a typical family chronological album, when I would put every photo in there, if I was really trying hard, I would end up with 45 pages for one year. And that was cutting things down. And as I showed you in my project tracker, sometimes I ended up with two volumes. So now that I'm focusing just on the big moments, I can look at this tracker and go, look at this. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 pages. 18 pages that will cover the entire year. And this is kind of a little, heavier of a year than some of the other years because we did have Big Bear in here and we had a and then we had Ellen's fifth grade promotion and so I felt like I wanted a couple pictures of that and then uh, we did Legoland at the end of the year and so that's what I'm saying is that sometimes you just use this and you go as you're scrolling through your digital photos you say what's important to me what's important that was a big moment for that year. So it does give you kind of this big overview, which is really nice, and then you can do some planning. So if I'm going to look again at my project tracker for 2008, now I know this album will only have about 18 pages at the most, and I might even pare that down once I get all of my pictures printed. And then so I know I can easily get 15 to 18 pages of 2008 and probably about the same of 2009 and a typical creative memory album maxes out at about 45 pages so depending on where the next couple of years are I can at least do 2008 2009 together or if I feel like I can get 2010 in there I can put that into the same album so this is a it's just a great way to see everything all at a glance, what your album's going to look like. Okay, so I hope that's making sense. And these are some great uh, 4th of July pictures that I just pulled out of my printer. So now these are going to go in my photo storage box into my little 4th of July tab, my little 4th of July photo folder. Okay, so those are gonna pop right in there. Now, what is also exciting is that I can make all these photo folders and I can have hundreds of these photo folders, but what I can also do is go ahead and use them just like they are here and sort them through. And then I'm going to show you another tool that we have that has been used by Creative Memories customers and consultants for a long, long, long time. And I've used this tool for a very long time myself. And it's called Power Layouts. And so one thing that you can do, the next step if you wanted to really see what your album's going to look like, is that you can take these photos and then put them in the Power Layout box. Now, what happens then is that you have all these folders that you can just change the date from 2008 to 2009, and then you're ready to go right away into the next year and just print your photos, select your photos, edit them, and then print them, and you're set. Okay, so let me just slide 4th of July back in there. If you remember, I have my Creative Memories Power Sort Box, and this just goes right in the front in the little pod. Okay, so my goal is really to work on each year and then get these into a power layout box and then right into an album as soon as I can. So that then when I get 2009 pictures in here, 2010, so I'm, I'm gonna just keep working through this process and emptying my photos as I go. So as I mentioned, this has been around for quite a while. In fact, my boxes, I think, are probably a good 15 to 20 years old. So what I decided to do, I had these labeled with different projects. And what I was realizing is those projects were just sitting there on my shelves because, again, I felt like I just didn't have that direction, that structure that I needed in order to continue with my projects. So I took another look at my power sort boxes and I decided to relabel this box as my family big moments. Okay, so you can see right there, I put the tag 
right here on the box. Now, something else um, I should mention is that, uh, as, I, as I said, I've had these boxes a really long time. And so my elastic ended up getting all funky and stretching out. So I just went to Walmart and they had, these are those hairband, the hairband elastic. So you could probably find this at Joanne or Walmart. And then there's holes in the bottom here. And so I just cut a, cut a piece of the elastic, put it through the holes, put some, a great big knot on the other end, and then just redid my elastic for these boxes. Okay, so if you have some of these from long ago and you thought, oh, I can't use those anymore, just redo the elastic and you'll be good to go. So what are these boxes? If you've never seen this before, this is a fabulous process. So Creative Memories came up with this wonderful box, which is, again, made out of polypropylene. It's archival, so if you leave stuff in here for a while, nothing is going to happen to it. And the same with these guides. These are called Power Layout Guides. Now you get a set of these with your box when you order it from Creative Memories, but you can also order extra guides. So I just have a ton of guides left over from when I used to do these all the time. So technically, when I first learned about Power Layouts, what how we did this is that everybody had a six foot table and you had your stack of printed, this is when we had uh, rolls of 36 film and you got doubles and you just had your rolls of film. And then you sat there and you kind of decided on the six foot pit table, you laid out all of your boards and each of these boards represents a page in your scrapbook. So I would set these out and so this would be my left hand side and this would be my right hand side of my two page spread. And then I would go and I would sort photos down on these pages. And it's really, it is really nice to see if you have the space, if you have a big dining room table that's not being used and, or if you have a, an area where you can lay these out. I've seen people do power layouts on beds or on the floor or whatever you have available. You, if you want to see the whole process, how the whole album looks together, then you can just lay out these pages all out as many as you have. Now, since I am here filming for you guys in a very small, limited space, I'm just going to show you kind of two pages at a time how you can also do this. And if you have less space, you can also do it with less space. Okay, so again, I have my left hand side and my right hand side. These also, these guides are archival, so they're not going to damage your photos. So if you remember the very first two pages when you open my album, are going to be Big Bear. Now, typically, you're also going to have a title page. So if you wanted to put a certain photo or if you want to designate that this is going to be a title page, what you can do is just get a, a post-it note and just make a note that this is the title page. And you might also decide, okay, I'm going to have to come back and think about what photos I want to put on the title page or if I wanna put a quote here or just what that's gonna look like. So you can designate that and then you know that's your title page. So I'm gonna set this over so you know that when you open your album, okay, that title page is gonna be here and you're gonna open it and now you're gonna see your first two page spread. So, so this is where I'm going to have my Big Bear photos. And this is where you can just loosely put down your photos and see which photos you're gonna put together. And this is also where you might go, oh gosh, you could either make a note or you could do it right then and say, oh yeah, I need some more photos, okay? And then I might have a photo, I might decide that that photo is gonna go in here or it is not. I always like to have one or two extra photos for a two page spread in case I'm cropping things down small or I need a little something extra that um, I wanna include on my pages. Now, something I want you to notice right away here, and you've heard me say this many, many times, and that is your photos are the star of your pages. 
and you bet I am going to get all of these photos on my two-page spread because even if I have to use a peekaboo pocket, I am going to layer those and get all of these photos on my two-page spread because the photos are the important, important part of your album. And if I need to put these two photos in a, in a peekaboo pocket and then now I have a space here to journal. So another thing you can do in this process is also include the materials that you may want to use on these pages. Now this is especially helpful if you're going to go to a crop and you're planning to uh, scrapbook at a getaway or with some friends and you have a, a good chunk of time and you can work. So here you can see I just went ahead and I put a peekaboo pocket right here because I already know I'm probably going to need an extra little space here and I want to put a journal box. Now if I was also feeling really ambitious or I knew that I had some product that I just really wanted to use on this page, I could go ahead and pull some paper and include that right here on the layout if I wanted to do that as well. And the same with stickers or journal boxes or anything like that. I could go ahead and put these down right with my pictures so that I know, okay, I've already decided. Now, another thing sometimes I would like to do is make a note. So this is the Glacier Pack. And so if there's other stickers and embellishments, that's also another thing I can do, is just make a note right here on the page that I'm using a particular pack that I want to uh, showcase on these pages. And that's just another note that I have. This is also a place where you could put, if you have an enlargement or memorabilia, that you could make the same kind of a note and just say, oh, don't forget the eight by 10, or if you have it already, go ahead and put that on these two pages, okay? So then, once you have this, what you do is you stack these power layout boards in order of your album, okay? So this is the left-hand page. I'm gonna stack it on top of the right-hand page. And then if you remember, I have the title page there. So then I'm gonna stack the title page there. So then you're, you're not gonna use the back of that page, but you're actually gonna get two more boards. Okay, so you don't ever use the back of one of the power layout boards. You just keep using new boards. And again, I have a left-hand side and a right-hand side. And so then I'm going to take my next set of photos, which happens to be Valentine's Day, and I'm going to lay out those photos. Okay, so... I had some really good photos of Valentine's Day for this year, and so I know, wow, perfect. I've got those set up. If I wanted to add a Valentine's pack or paper or make a note, I could do that. And then again, I've got that ready to go, and then I stack the left page on top of the right page. And now I'm going to get the first pages that I did, my Big Bear photos and my title page, and put those on top. So you can see that this process even works in a very limited space. You just have to kind of keep your stack in order and then just keep working. And then you would just add your next two pages, take it out of your, take them out of your photo folders. This is Adam's birthday. And then go ahead and add those to the power layout. And again, the same thing, if there was some paper, I could go ahead and add that. Or if there was a special card, I could add that left on top of right. And now I get to put the rest of my stack on here. So now you can see how this will so easily go together and you can just have all the pages ready to go for your album project. And so what you would do once you have all your pages organized on the different layout boards is you just set them right in your box, okay? And they fit perfectly just like that. 
and then you are and then make sure you put your elastic on and then you are ready to go. So then the next step is easy. If you're taking this on the go, you would just grab this box, your album, and then all of your essentials and you would be ready to create your album. It's even faster if you've already picked out different product on your pages and then it's already there and you can just whip out those pages. Just wait until everybody sees how quick you are. Okay, now that I have everything organized in the power layout box and I've got my album, the next thing I would do is just open it up. And if you remember, we had the first page was going to be the title page. And then I have this open. And what do I do is I pull out my first two pages for my scrapbook and I'm ready to go. So you can see. just how easy that would work and you just slide those on there and then you're ready to work on your first two page spread okay so i wanted to show you this option i don't know that there's a lot of information out there on how to do it so i did want to just show that to you as an option that you can use in order to organize your album now you also have the option of just working straight out of your photo folders. That is entirely your choice. One of the reasons I wanted to mention the power layout box at this point though is because I kind of see the power layouts helping in certain projects, especially if you have a lot of memorabilia that you're working with and you're not quite sure where that's going to kind of fit into your album, it's really nice to go ahead and lay your photos out and then decide where all that memorabilia is going to go. So again, something to consider, the power layout box when you are putting together your albums. Okay, so I hope that was helpful to understand a little bit more about how I am going to approach my big moment chronological scrapbooking. And my goal is to just keep working on each one of these big moment trackers until I have all of my pictures selected, edited, and printed and ready to go in my power sort box, in photo folders, and also in my power layout box. Then I know I can just make a lot of progress on these chronological scrapbooks. And that would be my next step is really just to get into the fun part of getting those photos into the albums. So this is really exciting because I'm starting to see all of the organization pay off and see where my albums are going. So as I mentioned, the next two episodes are going to be focusing on theme albums and how I'm getting those projects set up and then the Library of Memories type albums. And that one will be a little bit more detailed because there is a lot to Library of Memories. And so I hope this kind of gave you a better idea of what the big moments are going to look like. Now, of course, one of the trickiest components when you're getting things organized and set up are your photos. Now, I did want to briefly touch on how I looked at my photos for my big moments and the keyword that I used, which is big moments underscore 2008. So as I was scrolling through those pictures, I think I had about 2000 pictures for 2008 that I was scrolling through. And once I selected these down, you can see I really just picked my best photos. While I was going through my digital photos, that also gave me the opportunity to just kind of look and go, wow, those are bad photos. And I deleted those right away. I mean, there were some of, you know, somebody's elbow or a shoe or whatever that were just kind of oops pictures. And so I just went ahead and deleted those as I was scrolling through and looking for my big moments. What I don't want you to do is get hung up on all of those great photos in between the moments. 
because we're going to come back around and take a look at all of those photos that were not used in your big moments. And that's where we're either going to put them in a theme album or we're going to put them into the library of memories. But again, what I want you to remember is that there are A, B, and C photos. And so I just talked about how I was really able to pick out some of my C photos very quickly, and I just got rid of them. And then there's going to be A and B photos left that are not in my big moments that I need to do something else with. So I'm going to come back and talk more about that and about that process for your photos. But I just wanted you to have a starting point because you can just focus and look at what your big moments are. Forget about all the other photos for now. We're going to come back to them and just make some progress on a big moment scrapbook. I think you're going to feel really good. It felt so good for me to just get these photos off the computer and printed and ready to go into a scrapbook. I can't tell you how excited I am to get these into an album and to look at those photos again. So that's all about the big moment. We're coming back around. We're going to look at those photos. Don't worry. But for now, this is all about the big moment chronological scrapbook. So I hope that makes sense to you all. Please leave your comments, your questions, and remember that I have started a Facebook pop group that is open to the community. All you have to do is ask to join and you will be part of that community. And I want you all to use that as a growing opportunity for you and to ask questions. And I will pop in and out of that group page as I can in between making these videos for you and answer any questions I can. You can also find me on Instagram. So if you haven't checked out my Instagram, it is craft.some.joy. And my Facebook page is Craft Some Joy with Lauren Hines. So until next time, I hope you take time to look at your big moments and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.